So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, how I disassemble and rebuild a stator for these Honda horizontal motors. And that's your condenser. Your point. It's your primary coil, your ignition coil, that's your lighting coil, and then your leads that hook into your harness. I'm just going to start disassembling this. These components will all be uh, thrown away and replaced with new items. All this hardware that I'm taking off and it's giving me a hard time uh, will be replaced in the, uh, the kit that I ordered. They have new hardware. Time to start using the impact drill. So make sure to keep your black uh, clip there that holds those wires in place. Those don't get uh, replaced in the kit, so you need to keep your old one. So that one screw is stripped out. What I ended up uh, eventually doing here was uh, getting a Dremel with a small cutting wheel and slitting, uh, making a slit in it. And then I was able to use a flathead screwdriver to break it loose eventually. Or actually, I'm sorry, vice grips. So again, remember to keep 
and hold on to that little uh, wire holder. There's your O-ring. You want to remove this old one and replace it. And then there's your seal there. That uh, goes around the crankshaft. So you want to get that old one out and replace that too. I just use a flathead and kind of pry it out. Sometimes they can be a little difficult. All right, so there's your empty plate now. So it's been cleaned up and ready for the new seals. So the opening faces the back. Just make sure it sits in there nice and flush. And then you can just stretch your uh, O-ring over easily. Make sure it sits in the channels. Alright, so here's the new kit. All the hardware that came in the kit. New coils, condenser, there's a new O-ring, new crankshaft seal, reusing that part for the wires, that's the point. Here's your lead from your point, it's going to go to the condenser. All new hardware. Is your condenser. It's a little uh, felt like material with oil that uh, runs on the kind of the lobe of the uh, flywheel to lubricate it. That's your primary coil, ignition coil. This is going to be your lighting coil with its lead connected to it that hooks into the harness, your main harness. All right, so you're going to want to scrape all these lead wires. They have some sort of waxy residue over them that don't let uh, good conductivity. So make sure you scratch these uh, with a flat blade very thoroughly. If you skip this step, your stator most likely will not work once you get it all uh, soldered up. Alright, so on this point, I'm going to get this isolator that uh, isolates the points from this uh, leap wire that I'm going to connect. So I just want to make sure uh, you put this together correctly so that the lead does not uh, 
conduct any electricity to the point itself. Or ground out, I guess you could say. So I'm going to go ahead and just hook, hook this lead up here, get it and uh, prepare it for the installation. I'm just going to leave it a little loose so that once I get it installed I'll be able to make the final adjustment on it. So just look at the orientation of your plate. Remember that uh, which, which coil goes on the uh, studs or the mounts. That's going to be your lighting coil and that's your ignition or primary coil. Don't, don't uh, mix them up. So we're going to put the ignition coil on. I got my one power lead that I scratched with the razor blade. And then I got my grounding lead that you're going to mount with the eyelet and the uh, Fasten the uh, uh, coil to the mount with the screw. This is grounding your coils to the plate. So it's always good practice to clean this uh, stator plate up and make sure all these uh, mounting studs are clean third thoroughly to prevent any poor grounding issues. I'm just trying to keep that eyelet as tight as possible because I got to make sure that it doesn't touch the condenser that's going to go next to it. So I'm kind of pushing it up tight and making sure I hold it while I tighten it. So next one up is the lighting stator coil and uh, you just got to kind of get all the wires run underneath it so that it can come out in the correct orientation towards the uh, wire holder clip. Again, I'm just trying to make sure that my wires are nice and snug and uh, aren't sticking out any more than they need to. So I'm going to run these wires underneath the coil. Make sure my black lead is not tangled up so I can get as much length as possible for it to reach the condenser.
So again, that's your eyelet. That's going to be your uh, ground. I'm going to run the uh, screw or bolt through that and hold it in place. The goal here with all these wires is to run them as efficiently as possible and as tightly as possible so that uh, you know they don't get nicked by the flywheel turning or the crankshaft. You can see how I ran the wires underneath the coil. I'm going to want it to come out right there where you're going to put your black clip on, the wire retaining clip. I'm pulling a little extra lead for me so I can make sure that wire makes it to the condenser, the black wire. Kind of make your final adjustment before you put your clip on. And you want to make sure those wires are nice and snug there because the flywheel comes really close to that area. So you want to make sure that uh, you've got everything tucked in and it's doing its job. So I remember I left that loose so I can make my adjustments here. I'm going to go ahead and install my point. So this is not setting the point, but I'm just installing it so that I can solder all the wires together here. So now I'm going to make my adjustment to this lead wire so that I clear everything and also that I don't contact and ground out. So I take my time here to make sure this wire is nice and uh, ran correctly. using a fly head here just to make some bending tweaks to it. And then the um, bolt and nut are so small that I usually grab uh, some needle nose pliers to help tighten it up once I'm in the proper position.
All right, time to install the condenser. It's got one screw. All right, time to use the solder iron. There's a couple different things, products that I use. This rosin paste flux to get all my wires tipped, tips prepared. Uh, tip tenner for my solder iron. And then I just use this OD uh, electrical solder. And then you got three wires you're going to have to solder here. Get your two blacks. I'm going to. And your green from your uh, primary coil. Or ignition coil. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put some uh, rosin paste on the ends of these wires here so that I can get my solder um, stick to them. Makes my life a lot easier. Makes the job cleaner. I'm going to make sure I get these two wires, the two black wires soldered together. This makes it uh, pretty e makes it easier for me. It's just how I like to do it. I'm going to try and tend this wire here. You can see those are connected very well. And I'm going to now get these all put together on top of the condenser. And the goal here on this condenser when you're soldering it is to make sure that you keep all these wires and the solder all in the center. You don't want anything touching the outer uh, rim or outside casing of the condenser. You need to avoid that. And that's another reason that these don't work once you get them uh, rebuilt. Is if you have these wires or solder it touches the outer edge of the condenser, uh, that's going to cause it to uh, ground out. I kind of like to twist at least one <clears throat> one strand around here, around this one clip and then solder the rest together.
I'm just trying to work on the bringing the solder all back more into the middle here just to make it a cleaner connection. The other thing is that you uh, want to make sure you don't heat the condenser up too much while you're doing this. So don't keep your iron on it for too long. It, I could end up damaging the uh, condenser. So there's my finished soldered wires. Everything is in there nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. Nothing's touching the outer shell of the condenser. You know, all the wires are nicely tucked in there. All right, finals, put on your like felt material with the oil on it. That's the lubricating uh, for the uh, cam lobe on the uh, flywheel. All right, so we're going to install it now on the motor. Those two are your connecting bolts, and you're going to put O-rings down there to help seal the holes from the fasteners. So don't forget those, or else you'll have a leaky cover. So this is uh, going to be a tight fit. So this is a tight fit to help uh, inhibit any oil from seeping out of this uh, condition here. So you're going to have to give it a, some pretty decent, uh, you know, taps around the circumference of this plate to get the seat or bed itself properly. Here's my method. I'll show you. Just using a decent hammer and uh, any kind of a screwdriver or little piece of wood or something. I use a punch. Just work my way around it nice and gently. Make sure it seats itself evenly. Even tap it in the center area near the crank so that seal gets pushed down nice and tight around that condition. All right, put your fasteners in. And give it a good torque. I just use hand torque to do this. Alright, so it's nice and snug. Uh, next is just put your flywheel on. I don't go into any detail how to set the points because it's just too hard to film. There's other videos out there of people showing you how to do it. Uh, I just chose not to, to really talk about it. Here I'm going to show you how to test your coil though. Once it's hooked up, you got your black lead. That's your power to your coil. Uh, use an alligator clip. 
hook it up to a coil, a spare coil. So hook the black wire from the stator to your black wire coming from your coil. And then you ground out the coil. I uh, just ground it on the head. Put your spark plug in and then put a kick shaft kicker on. And, uh, you know, you can put the plug on the head and you'll see spark. If it works, great. If not, go back and check your wiring.